G'day! In today's video, I'll be opening up this HP desktop with the model number HP 190068A, which we should be able to see on the bottom just here. There we go. Also, model number up here. We'll be using two sticks of Kingston Fury, 16 gig kit in total, 3200 megahertz speed. I doubt this board will run at that speed, but that's what I've got and it's relatively cheap. Also replacing the failing one terabyte hard drive with a crucial MX 500 gig. To get into it, looking at the back, we've got this screw here. I'm just gonna use a plain flathead screwdriver. That should get us in. go. With that undone, we should just be able to pull the tab now, or here, like that, and lift up and we should be in. Looking inside here, we look to have a few different upgrade options. I'm going to start with the power supply. Looking down here, we have a maximum 180 watts. So you may be able to put it in a very low power usage graphics card, maybe like an RX 6400, uh, an RTX 3050 still might be too powerful. You do want a single slot graphics card, as you don't want or a single fanned graphics card. To dual fans, you'd be struggling. And to begin with, after that, I believe we're gonna have to take the front here. These look to push up. And then we'll try and cover hard drive, RAM, Wi-Fi, graphics expansion. There's probably not too much I can say regarding the... Definitely struggling there. Ah, we have a DVD drive holding the front in. With an eject tool. That would probably help me in this instance. There we go. Well enough, looks like we have to take this off to get in there. Just leave that out of the way, just for the minute. Also, if you're wanting to change the case, you will lose your front I.O. So it may fit into a different case, the board. And even then, it's looking like it's using a slightly different standard. So swapping the board probably won't help. Now yeah, for unplug solder. Data, power. You see a screw down the front here that's holding this whole bracket in. I'm assuming there's going to be one on the other side too. For you playing at home, this one right here. Out of the way. And rather battling that screw down there, I'm going to use one of these. Which I believe, going by the number, has T15 on it. CR-V T15. Should make undoing this screw a little bit easier. Hopefully. Okay, that started it. I have one of those screws holding it in over here as well. I'll do that here. There's another screw holding it in, I suspect. A tad disappointing. I think it's coming back to this DVD drive. Let's figure out how to take this face plate off. Not sure if it's plastic welded here. I do see a tab just here. That started it. There we 
we go. We're now off. One front panel off. Release cage. Yeah. Unplug this one. This one. Does that pull out or in? No. Pushes in and releases. Now that's out of the way. Get that cable out of the way. From there we can lift up. Two more here, one over here. Now this is what I was wanting to find. We have two RAM slots. I spread it out like so. That is now in the open position. You gotta grab this, pull it up. We have four gig of PC4 2666. So not very fast RAM at all. Granted, I don't believe this motherboard would probably really support any form of XMP, which is what you need to use to enable the RAM to run at its full speed. But simply going from 4 gig to 16 gig of DDR4 is definitely going to help. When we put the RAM in, we have this little notch just here. We want to match it up with the notches down here. So if I fold that out of the way, I believe we need to go this way. So it looks to line up. And from there, even pressure on each corner and push down both at the same time should make a bit of a crunchy sound and then pull the legs, the white bits towards the ram. So it kind of goes up and like this. Do that on both sides, should be pretty firm. Do the same over here. Line it up, sit it in. Makes like a kind of sandy, crunchy sound when you first push it in. There we go. And that's in. And then I'll just pull those tabs up just to make sure they're locked into position. And with the RAM in there, we may have to go to BIOS to enable XMP, or you can just simply leave it at that and have your upgraded RAM now running in dual channel. Next up, moving this out of the way, is the hard drive, which this one here, the customer was saying, was fairly noisy and extremely slow. He was saying that Turning it on would just be waiting time, 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 really getting nowhere. There we go. So we have a one terabyte hard drive by Toshiba, manufactured in 2019. I'm going to switch that out for that MX500, which I find a good, good value SATA, SATA SSD. There are cheaper ones, you can get them as cheap. So it's about half the price that one of these is worth. So I'd rather pay that little extra premium to know that this, cut, this SSD is going to keep going for a lot longer than the BX series, which is a fairly more budget one. Now, I should be able to line this up on the tray, point it out the back, like so. And some of those screws that I just took out should hopefully match up to here. Being there's no moving parts on an SSD, you can just have it freely bouncing around the case, as long as it's not going to hit any fans. So usually, nope, these ones are pointless. So I will discard those screws and grab some fresh ones. As I was saying, if you don't have any, um, if you don't have any a way to mount the drive, even if it's just sitting on that tray, it's going to be fine living like that anyway. Um, what got? Okay, so these ones have a, fine, a finer pitch drum, a finer thread. And I go about here. I'm just going to focus on doing the diagonals. Go, screw that into there. Over here. No. Come on. 
There we go. There we go. Like that. So what I'm going to be doing is using a program called a Cronus True Image to clone from this drive in an external enclosure to this drive here. And then from there, the operating system should be migrated over and should be running considerably quicker. If we go back to here, down here we have a wi -Fi, the Wi-Fi card. This particular one, can't actually see yeah, it's typical HP brands. I'm not sure exactly what my wireless card this is, but that could be replaced with like an Intel AX200, which is a Wi-Fi 6 card, or you can just leave it as is. Got room for different expansion here. Granted, you don't really have physically much room beside it. So if you put in a, a dual slot card, it will cover up this one here. Next up, I want to revert to how we are. Also the processor, according to the HP website, there doesn't look to be too many, or it doesn't really mention many other pro Ryzen processors. So I'm not sure if that would be upgradable. Being it's a, I think it's a 2000 GE, or something to that effect, a Ryzen 3 2000 2400GE, I think it was called, then being it's such an old processor, you could probably put the 2000 series in here, maybe the 3000, but I'm doubtful that the 5000 series would be supported by this. Now I'm going to line this back up. Looks to sit in the cradle here. Fold down, like so. There was that single screw along the front here, down the bottom. Should just go in like so. And next up, I want to connect up the hard drive. So I've got, since this hard drive's in a different uh, position, I'll have to rotate the cables. One, rotate that around. Two, so that is the opposite direction as what it came in. Next up, I want to put the front cover back on. Put it down the bottom like so. And swivel it up like a book. Next up, drive in the front. Like so. And then from here, I'll try and put the faceplate back on. Okay, got power. Data. Faceplate. Uh, which way will we go? This way, I believe. There we go. That's now back on. Nice and flush. That should be fine. Next up from here, we'll put the, uh, the cover back on. Screw the screw back in. And all going well, should have hopefully been able to upgrade your HP desktop with some more RAM and an NVMe SSD. Hope this helps and I'll see you later. Bye.